Alright, so there's no air conditioning call on these Lennoxes. Both of them here. Uh, one of these has been featured on one of my other videos. But I got a condensed fan motor going. And I have no compressors, I don't think. At least I don't hear them. So. Oh no, one's running. First stage is running. Second stage is not. Our code. Right there. I don't know if it comes in video, but it's at 15. Oh, it's a little cheat sheet here. 15. High pressure two, open three times. So, we're going to check our condensed fan motors. This one is brand new. That one is not new, but they are both running. So, our problem, most likely, is it just being dirty. So, I'll ask to clean it and see what the pressures are afterwards. Yeah, this liquid line is slightly, it's pretty warm. So, with both of these compressors running, I bet you a head pressure went through the roof. <laughs> like 95 today. So, so. This guy here, let's see what this is doing. Oh, Jesus, falling on the roof. clean both units, come back and check our pressures. Yeah, she's definitely toasty. Okay, I to clean these coils, just want to show you what we're getting off. Uh, and you can see. Alright, so I'm going to go about cleaning all these coils, and then we'll check pressures after that. Alright, my unit's clean. It's been running for about 15 minutes. Gotta uh, make sure that all the water is uh, that I put on there is evaporated off the coil so I can get the screw reading. Uh, ignore the missing crystal. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't use digital gauges because if I break them, I'm gonna cry. This, I just gotta get another $25 head. I was uh, Lewis and Clark on my way across Lake Botulism here and uh, I slipped and I whacked the crystal right up against that. And I got my boot full of the schmoo water and I dropped my hat in it too. But, so we're hooked up to the second stage which uh, if I remember right is the one that was out on head pressure. So head pressure wise, uh, 240, or, uh, sorry, 235, and suction 75. Coming back, nice and cold to the compressor. Liquid line is lukewarm, not cold, not, uh, not hot, and as far as the dryer goes, both sides of the dryer, same temperature by hand. Let's hook up to the other stage here. pressure is a little lower so I could have some water still on that but same temperature on both sides of this uh, dryer suction's coming back ice cold so it, as the head pressure is going up a little bit could have been I just don't have it tight all the way to Bit better. So we're like 25 psi difference there. This 
system's also been cut into because it has a bigger drive. So uh, I think I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, the air pressure's going up now. It might have just been me from discharging that little bit in the gauges. Uh, that's going right back, but our, our suction pressure is right on where it was before. And don't worry, I did make sure the gauges are working fine. So. Gauges are reading correct, it's not for me dropping them. So this kitchen unit here is for 100%. And let's go to the dining room and see what's going on with that one that was off on low pressure. Okay, it's the second unit here. This was the low one that was going off on low pressure and I pretty much have zero refrigerant in there. So I have a nitrogen tank hooked up. I'm gonna bump it, uh, give it like 200 PSI in there. And we'll start searching for the leak to see if it's something easily fixable or where it is. So I'm going to bump this up to 200 and then start searching and we'll come back and see anything. Hey, look what unit it is. It's the one I had fixed forever ago with soft solder in the coil. And guess where the leak is? You said that it's not on any of those joints, he'd be correct, because guess where it is? It is right there. Let me uh, get my fingy in there. You can see a couple of bubbles, hopefully. It's right here. Right behind it. Let me see if I can get it to bubble a little bit better. Uh, either way, trust me, it's right there. So I am gonna fix it. Okay, I got you propped up there where hopefully you can see what I'm doing. But so this right here is my original fix. Now that's been like that forever. I mean, the video that I showed this in was, had to have been a good, at least three or four years ago, and I was, this probably happened four or five years before that, but my leak is actually back here on this. There's like a little dent there. Um, and that is where it's leaking. So uh, we're gonna clean this up. And we're gonna use the product that everybody hates, but I love. This tiniest whiff of flux on that, more than enough. Now, here's the reason why I don't braise something like this is because you try to braise this, you're gonna loosen up this joint here. There's also another joint directly behind it, you have a good chance of heating up too. And a lot of times, when you expand these, when you heat them up. They let the pipe kind of vibrate in there now and you get rub outs. So this, nice low temp option, will be more than stronger. We just do this here. And there you go. That should be repaired right there. We can just make sure we got it all the way down. If for any reason we don't like that bottom edge, looks pretty good, but you know, we're here, so we'll be thorough. What we can do is just hit that and then just a little doink. That's all it needs. Make sure we're wrapped around 100% on the bottom there. There you go. All done. Now we'll pressure test that. Okay, I got 200 PSI in there again. And I just dropped my <laughs> soap bubble bottle and broke the top off it. You know, I'm batting a thousand today.
All right, so you see no bubbles, but we also check, put a little on your finger, and hold it against the bottom. And no bubbles. All right, so we're solid. Now we just gotta change the filter dryer and give it a vacuum. The good thing is, is there was still a little bit of pressure left in the unit, so never 100% discharged, so I'm pretty sure nothing got into the system, but we're gonna change the dryer anyway just because we're here, you know, that's the thing that you do, is whenever a system is open, change the dryer. So here's another great thing about using Stay Bright. You have a relatively replaceable part, something that you change out, maybe not that often, but I guess change out whenever you have a system open. Drop a tiny bit of flux on there, clean up that joint. And there's all wires in here everywhere that you don't want to fry. Simple as that. And then you get the other side, which you can't see. I'm not going to move the. Get up in here. Dryer's out. All right, so I'm just gonna pop the new one in, and then we're gonna vacuum the bejesus out of this, and I'm gonna go in my truck, cool off, have a nice drink of water, do some paperwork, and then uh, hopefully this should be down to vacuum. Okay, got my little electronic charging scale here, set for nine pounds, eight ounces. Hit the big ring go button. Open up. It's obviously this is after I vacuumed it, check the vacuum, all that good stuff. Alrighty. So we just leave that open. We're popping the refrigerant into the high side, which is going into towards the evaporator and back into the coil. It's not obviously gonna make its way back to the compressor. Do not dump liquid refrigerant into these ports that are on the discharge line. You will have a bad day. All right, so we're just gonna let that take what it'll take, and then we're gonna flip the breaker. There's also a delay on this because there's a uh, digital thermostat, so I just heard that click, so that is the low side pressure control, low pressure control right here, clicking on. And uh, like I said, we'll just put as much refrigerant in there as it'll take, and then we can meter the rest in. Now this is a 22 unit, I'm using 407C. We found 407C to work really, really well. 407C does not necessarily like to play well with mineral oil, which the older 22 units have, but if you have a newer 22 unit or a replaced compressor like this one here, you will have uh, poly oil in it, which 407C likes, so you'll be perfectly fine. And uh, everybody has their preferred replacement for 22. This is ours. It works. I like it. I'll use it. So. We got about another pound to put in there. Both compressors are running. It's a little loud.
75 on the low, two and a quarter on the high, pretty much what we matched on the other unit. on both sides of the dryer. That's how the liquid line feels roughly the same temperature. I'll check the charge on this one too, make sure that's all right. But, uh, we're good. All right, so uh, we got this one up and running. The other one is still running fine. So uh, we should be good to go. Right now I'm gonna pack up all my stuff, get back down to the truck, turn the air conditioning on new plane winter. And uh, good news is my hat's bone dry now. Rinse this off with the hose now. It's nice and dry again. You know, Swash rockle mechanical here. And uh, yeah, so button everything up. On to the 